Hey everyone, Stefan Hartman here, irondpc.com, bringing you my lecture on BPC-157, the Wolverine peptide. Very cool, uh, peptide therapy. I wouldn't say it's a novel area of medicine, but it's an area of medicine that hasn't been adopted into the mainstream. And why is this? Well, a lot of peptides are naturally found in the human body. Thus, pharmaceutical companies can't make a patent on it and can't make billions of dollars off of it. But thankfully, we have access to compounding laboratories that allow us to utilize these peptides for patients who are interested in them. Peptide Pharmacy being one of them. Um, here's a little description from them. BPC-157 is a peptide chain composed of 15 amino acids. It is a partial sequence of body protective compound, BPC, that is discovered in and isolated from human gastric juices in the stomach. Numerous research has demonstrated that it accelerates the healing of many different wounds, including tendon to bone healing and superior healing of damaged ligaments. Further research suggests systematic healing of intestinal damage such as fistulas, inflammatory disorders, gastrointestinal cramps, Crohn's disease, and leaky gut. BPC has been shown to protect organs and help to prevent gastric ulcers. So let's go through some of this research on BPC-157. Here's one from the Journal of Physiology at Paris, 1997, so a little bit a uh, while back, showing that uh, it helps with wound healing. In our work, we test the influence of BP7 on granulation tissue and collagen formation on angiogenesis as well as tensile strength development using uh, some experimental rat models. And that's where a lot of this research come from. It's from rat models. Um, specimens were histologically assessed for collagen and reticulin and blood vessel using scoring and morpho morphometry. In all experiments, significant differences between BPC-157 treated animals and controls were found, showing a strong and promoting involvement of BP7, BPC in healing process. Let's look at some more research on this. Novel cyto cytoprotective mediator, stable gastroprotective pentadecapeptide, BP7, BPC-157, vascular recruitment and gastrointestinal tract healing. So what did they find? After a perforator injury, perforator injury such as stomach, BPC-157 therapy activates blood vessels running towards the defect. So that's, that's a cool thing, right? We want blood vessels to go there and heal it. Um, BPC-157 and gastropeptide may serve as a remedy for various central nervous system disorders. So something a little bit different than ligament ten and tendon healing. BPC-157 was successful in the therapy of GI tract, periodontitis, liver, and pancreas lesions, and the healing of various tissues and wounds. Very interesting. Let's look more at these uh, CNS disorders. Um, the brain-gut axis in therapy with BPC-157. It was successfully used in the therapy of periodontitis, esophagitis, and st stomach, intestine, liver, and pancreas lesions. In addition, BPC-157 interacts alcohol-induced acute and chronic NSAID-mediated lesions. BPC-157 may prevent, but also reverse adjuvant arthritis. Counteracts aspirin-induced prolonged bleeding and thrombocytopenias. Recovers lower esophageal sphincter and pyloric sphincter function. Heals the intestinal anastomosis and fistulas and improves adaptation of intestinal wall layers after massive resection. Yeah, very interesting. BPC-157 counteracts many lesions that may appear, for instance, within insulin or NSAID overdose, as well as GI liver and brain lesions, impacting a strong influence on the central disturbances following peripheral administration. Interesting. BPC-157 on nitric oxide and possible beneficial effect on heart failure induced by doxorubicin. doxorubicin. So we know uh, doxorubicin, I do have a patient who has been injured by that, uh, causing heart failure. Uh, potentially, BPC-157 uh, may be an adjuvant therapy to help in such cases. Um, BPC-157 interacts with nitric oxide system, both NOS substrate L-arginine and NOS blocker L-NAME, in different models and species, including the regulation of blood pressure. BPC-157 can possibly help patients 
uh, that have been harmed by psychiatric drugs. Uh, improves dopamine and Parkinsonism? Let's see. The evidence encompasses that BPC-157 blocks cata catalepsy induced by haloperidol and flufenazine, as well as somatosensory disorientation after sulfuride and clozapine. This suggests a generalization and that BPC-157 may counteract side effects of different groups of neuroleptics, typical and atypical. Besides the beneficial effect of catalepsy, we combined, what was combined with antagonization of gastric lesions with haloperidol. These findings indicate that BPC-157 fully interacts with the dopaminergic system, both centrally and peripherally. That's pretty cool stuff. The, and when I worked in psychiatry, I did encounter quite often patients that had been damaged by t typical and atypical antipsychotic medications. Um, this here is suggesting that there may be some hope for these patients because there really is absolutely no hope for them currently. And they are stuck often with um, whatever akathisias or damage these drugs had done to them in the past. Various antidepressants have anti-ulcer activity, and we, sh and have, we show that depressive disorders could be effectively influenced by a primary anti-ulcer agent with cyto-organoprotective activity, such as BPC-157. Again, this was in rat studies. Uh, BPC-157 on traumatic brain injury. Um, this first came to my attention when I listened to a lecture by Dr. Andrew Heyman at the Nashville uh, Bioidentical Hormone Conference, where he was utilizing BPC-157 along with synapsin in an intranasal uh, suspension for a, a young adult with a traumatic brain injury. Um, this person did have a full recovery, or not a full recovery, I say a, a re spectacular recovery considering the extent of the brain damage, right? When a, this person was uh, a completely in a vegetative state and what was gradually coming back, uh, surprisingly. Here we're showing some evidence for why BBC-157 might work in such traumatic brain injury. BBC-157 can improve the healing course of spinal cord injury and lead to functional recovery in rats, which is fully wild, right? There's currently no treatment for spinal cord injury. Uh, we demonstrated that BPC-157 could also influence the healing of transected nerve. Incredible. This particular effect was obtained with both anastomose and non-anastomose nerves. Very interesting. The promoting effect of BPC-157 on tendon healing involves tendon outgrowth, cell survival, and cell migration. Um... Very interesting, it survives gastric juices, so it can be taken orally and does not need to be in a capsule. It can be put into a drink of water, essentially. Um, it is easily dissolved in the water. Experimentally, it, has, it was demonstrated to enhance the healing of different wounds, such as the gastric ulcer, skin, cornea, muscle, colon, colon, anastomosis, collocutaneous fistula, and segmental bone defect. It was also found to accelerate the healing of transected rat Achilles tendon and medial collateral ligament of knee. Um, currently, it is in clinical trial for treating inflammatory bowel disease. BPC-157 on a tendon healing. Um, no side effect or toxicity has been found in BPC-157, and they were really overdosing some rats on this thing, like uh, t like 2,000% greater than we would ever use in, the, in, the, in a human, right? Um, so there's no toxic dose for BPC-157, no um, known uh, side effect. Improves ligament healing in the rat. After MCL transection, BPC-157 was effective in rats when given once daily intraperitoneally or locally as a thin layer uh, dissolved in distilled water at the site of the injury. First application 30 minutes after surgery and then finally 24 hours before sacrifice. Uh, these poor rats. Likewise, BPC-157 was effective given per orally in the drinking water until sacrates. Commonly, BPC-157 exhibited consistent functional, biomechanical, macroscopic, and histological healing improvements. Thus, we suggest BPC-157 improved healing of acute ligament injuries. Um, very cool. Now, let's talk about the cost and logistics. Uh, it is a little bit expensive, right? A little bottle of this, uh, BPC-157, yeah, it has my name on it, 
is about 140, 150 bucks. And I recently used it um, after training really hard in Miami. I did some stretches and I felt something go in my shoulder. And this was exactly one week ago on Sunday. And it was so bad, I couldn't even lift my arm. I was like, what did I do? And I got back home. I was like, well, I got BBC 157 in the fridge. Let's use it. So what I have here is I have a tuberculin syringe and I have a 22 gauge needle. I have my alcohol swab. So I go and I clean off the top as we normally would. Reveal my shoulder. Now you don't need to inject it into the muscle, but that's just what I was doing in my case, right? We know this works systemically, so we can inject it into the fat, right? Usually it's done on the subcutaneous tissue. So I'm just going to drop very little of this, 0 0.15 to be exact. So we inject a little bit of air into here, and then we draw back 0 0.15, and I inject, a, I, I draw back a little bit more air. Then I take this off because I'm not harpooning myself with a 22 gauge needle. I'm using an insulin syringe. Right? This is 30 gauge needle. And we're gonna make sure the air bubbles are out of this thing. We don't like to knock it too hard. I wanna be very careful with this product. And we push up. There we go. I think I got a little bit more than I wanted in there. That's okay. The, the dosage range is 0 0.15 to 0 0.20. That can be done. Again, we don't need to inject it into the muscle. A lot of bodybuilders will do this. Just inject it right in there. A lot of bodybuilders will do that. They'll, you know, you hear stories about bodybuilders who like do a bench press and they'll rip their pec off their chest, right? They do a surgery, they get the surgery done to repair it, and then they inject BBC 157 around the surgical site to speed healing. So it's a bit of a, a bodybuilder idea that you can inject it in around the area to promote further healing. Um, and we saw some in, in those rat studies that was done as well. But we know it, it acts systemically, so it works in the whole body. So uh, for injection purposes, um, you can do it in the subcutaneous tissue, so grab a little bit of fat, put it right there, or locally around the area of injury. That's in the injectable form. I have been using it in certain patients with ulcers, gastric ulcers, duodenal ulcers, um, leaky gut syndrome, inflammatory bowel diseases. I've been using this along with other protocols to help heal those and have had good success. Uh, patients improving their acid reflux, feeling you know a lot better, you know, especially you know uh, patients who were on a, a large dose of antibiotics, steroids, suffering with COVID a long time, got, a, got some gut, was messed up, leaky gut syndrome, developed acid reflux. We put them on the BBC 157 protocol along with the biocidin protocol, some gut, uh, some dietary changes, and sure enough, uh, improvement there. Uh, for myself, I have full range of motion, so it, it's actually, uh, I was quite concerned about my injury, and I healed a lot faster than I had expected, right? It took literally about two and a half, three days, and I was back to serving 100%, 140 mile per hour serves on the court from, I could barely hold my arm uh, three days prior uh, to starting BPC 157. So... Hey, maybe it was just placebo, but I knew my injury, and that, that was very weird how quickly I came back onto training. The other interesting thing I noticed, so I have been dealing with a neck pain for literally a year, a full-on year. Now, I recently started going to Coastal Chiropractic and doing their protocols there, doing some traction, getting adjustments, and I tell you what, I had been going to them for about two to three weeks, and it was great and all, but my pain was still there in the neck. Did the BPC-157, Three days later, I had no pain in my neck. And this was a pain that I've been dealing with for literally years. Like it was on and off years, but this specific pain I'd had for one year consistently. And it was gone in three days after starting BPC 157. Coincidence? 
Maybe maybe it was the chiropractic that finally started working, but I, th I think it was the BBC 157. Um, and it feels great. There's no side effects to it. It's easy to administer um, using, you know, tuberculin syringe, 22 gauge needle uh, to draw it, and then the 30 gauge needle. The reason I do that is so I don't waste any, right? It's a very expensive product. So I'm going to draw back on this. I'm going to draw air into this, and then I'm going to uh, use the 30 gauge needle and be very careful about pushing the liquid up to the tip. So I see a couple bubbles, uh, or I see a little bit of fluid coming out the tip of the needle, and I know it's there, I know it's ready to go. Um, so if it does need a prescription, I do need to order this for, through my patients. Obviously this is a bit of an experimental uh, product. Um, there hasn't been a lot of whole uh, human trials on this. The patients just need to understand that. Um, that we're using something that has low risk that potentially could help them and it has been helping my patients and I like it and I will continue to be using BBC 157 and I will study more about these peptides because there is about 200 known peptides currently there's probably a lot more probably greater than two to three thousand peptides and they, there's, there's very interesting applications towards what these things can do for, for patients. Um, so stay tuned for more videos. I have to research all this because this was not taught in school. Uh, this is not taught in conventional medicine. This is not used in conventional medicine. This is something more that naturopaths have been using, bodybuilders have been using, and some functional medicine practitioners have been using. Uh, but this is cutting edge stuff. This is really cool stuff. And I see this is where the future of medicine is, is in these uh, peptides, uh, regenerative technologies. Um, I love it. It's super cool. It's what I'm all about. Hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. Uh, I'll see you all next time.